I lay on the cold kitchen floor, holding my side where I felt sharp pain spreading through my body. It felt like a knife was twisting inside me. My seven-year-old daughter, Lily, stood nearby, her small face showing how scared she was. Mommy, are you okay? Lily's voice shook, barely louder than a whisper. I tried to sound calm despite the pain. I'll be fine, honey. Just a bad stomach ache, I lied, trying to hide how serious it was. Footsteps echoed through the hallway as my husband, David, appeared in the doorway. His face showed annoyance instead of concern. He was ready for his trip, holding his suitcase. What's going on, Evelyn? Why are you on the floor? David asked, sounding annoyed. I think it's appendicitis, David. It's really bad. We need to go to the hospital. I managed to say, each word hurting me. He scoffed. Appendicitis? You're probably overreacting. It's likely just indigestion. But David, I really think, my words were cut off by a sharp pain, making me wince. David checked his watch, clearly impatient. I can't miss this trip with Rachel. Just call a taxi or something. I couldn't believe it. David, I can't even move. Lily's here. I need you, I begged, desperation in my voice. He shook his head, not caring. I'm sure it's nothing. Call if it gets worse, and with that he left, his suitcase trailing behind him. I was left alone in pain with Lily. Lily's small hands were in mine, her tears matching my own. Mommy, don't be sick. You have to be okay. I gathered what little strength I had and pulled Lily close. I'm here, darling. Mommy's here. With David gone, I knew I had to act. With shaking hands, I grabbed my phone and called the only person I knew I could count on. My brother, Michael. The phone rang, its sound piercing the quiet kitchen. Hello, Michael's voice came through, a beacon of hope. Michael, it's Evelyn. I need help. I think it's appendicitis. I can't move, and Lily is scared, I managed to say. Each word was a struggle. There was a brief silence, then Michael's voice, calm and steady, said, I'm on my way. Hold tight, Evelyn. I'll be there soon. Leaning against the cold tile floor, I closed my eyes, trying to endure the pain. Lily nestled close to me, a small comfort in the midst of turmoil. In that moment, a determination grew inside me. David's abandonment during my crisis wouldn't be forgotten. It was a deep hurt, a betrayal that marked a turning point. As I waited for Michael, one thing became clear. Things would change. In the hospital bed later, surrounded by sterile walls and beeping machines, a sense of calm settled in. The surgery for my appendicitis went well, but David's emotional absence still stung. I had called my parents to care for Lily while I recovered. Their voices were filled with concern and unspoken questions about David's whereabouts. Three days later, I was back home, the physical pain now a dull reminder of the recent ordeal. Lily greeted me eagerly, her face lighting up at my return. Mommy, you're back. Are you all better now? Her innocent question warmed my heart. I'm getting there, sweetie, I replied, hugging her tightly, grateful for her presence. The peace of our reunion was shattered the next day by the slam of the front door. David and his sister, Rachel, burst in, their voices filled with frustration. Why didn't you pick us up yesterday? We had to spend extra on a taxi and train fares. David's accusatory voice rang out as he entered the living room. I felt a surge of anger at his boldness. Welcome back. Must have been quite a journey, I said coldly, locking eyes with him. David halted, taken aback by my icy reception. Even Rachel seemed surprised by the tension. What's with the attitude, Evelyn? David demanded. I couldn't hold back anymore. While you were enjoying your trip, I was in a hospital. I said, my voice steady but simmering with anger. And you, Rachel, always demanding David's time without considering his family. 
Rachel flushed and David appeared bewildered. What are you talking about? You are fine, right? He replied, sounding dismissive. It's not just about being okay, David. It's about being there when your family needs you. I shot back, my frustration boiling over. Before David could respond, the living room door swung open, revealing Michael, our parents, and David's parents. Fourteen eyes filled with varying degrees of anger and disappointment fixed on David and Rachel. Why is everyone here? David's voice faltered, his confidence waning under their collective glare. Taking a deep breath, I channeled my pain and betrayal into words. David, you left Lily and me alone when we needed you the most. I had to go to the hospital, and you weren't there. I've told everything to our families. David seemed to shrink under the weight of my words, his usual bravado absent. His eyes darted around, searching for support, but finding none. It's not just about this one incident, David. It's about all the times you've prioritized Rachel over your own family. My brother Michael added, his disappointment evident in his voice. Rachel, typically confident, appeared uneasy, shifting her gaze between the floor and the upset faces around her. David attempted to defend himself, offering excuses and justifications. The confrontation grew heated, tension thick in the air. But for me, it marked a turning point. I realized I couldn't continue living in the shadow of David's neglect. It was time for change, time to assert myself and protect Lily. The meeting concluded without resolution, but the message was clear. I had the support of both our families, and David's careless facade had been shattered. As they departed, David's parents glanced at me with sympathy, silently acknowledging their son's shortcomings. That night, as I lay in bed, the events of the day replayed in my mind. I felt a mix of emotions, anger, disappointment, but also a newfound strength. David had revealed his true self, and I knew it was time for me to take charge of my life. The days following the confrontation were tense with unspoken words. David tried to act as if nothing had changed, but the atmosphere between us was heavy. I spent that time reflecting, realizing the depth of my discontent and the necessity for change. The decision I reached wasn't easy, but it felt crucial like a breath of fresh air after being stifled for so long. One evening, while David casually flipped through TV channels on the couch, I approached him with a folder in hand. My heart raced, but my determination held firm. David, we need to talk, I said, my voice steady. He glanced up, a hint of annoyance crossing his face. What now, Evelyn? I took a deep breath and handed him the folder. I want a divorce. David stared at me, disbelief and mockery flashing across his expression. Divorce. That's absurd, Evelyn. You're blowing things out of proportion. I shook my head, feeling a surge of empowerment. It's not an exaggeration. I thought long and hard about this. You've consistently prioritized Rachel over me and Lily. I can't continue like this. David sneered. You think you can manage alone? Don't be naive, Evelyn. His words were meant to hurt, but I stood firm. I'm not naive, David. I understand what this means, but I'd rather face uncertainty than continue feeling invisible in my own marriage. He laughed, a cold, bitter sound. Good luck, Evelyn. You'll regret this once you realize how tough it is out there. I felt my anger rise, but I kept my composure. This is my decision, and I'm sticking to it. For a moment, David seemed like he might argue further, but then he shrugged, a smug smirk on his face. Fine, have it your way. But remember, I warned you. As he turned back to the TV, dismissing me once again, I felt a whirlwind of emotions. There was fear, certainly, but also a powerful sense of liberation. I was finally taking charge of my life, stepping out of the shadows. The next day, I started the legal process for divorce. It was overwhelming with all the paperwork and legal steps, but I was determined. 
My parents and Michael were supportive, offering help and encouragement during this time. David's true nature became clear. He was dismissive and uncooperative, trying to intimidate me into giving up. But I stood my ground, strengthened by my family's support and my growing sense of strength. As time went on, David's facade began to crack. The charming, confident man I had married revealed himself to be selfish and manipulative, his true self exposed. The divorce proceedings were challenging, but I faced them bravely, each forward step a testament to my newfound determination. I was no longer the woman who lay on the kitchen floor, ignored and in pain. I was reclaiming my life, my dignity, and my happiness. The divorce process was exhausting, marked by David's constant attempts to undermine and demean me. In our meetings, he would sneer and make hurtful remarks about my parenting and my future without him. But instead of letting his words defeat me, they fueled my determination to break free from his toxic influence. Enjoy your struggles, Evelyn, David taunted in one of our final meetings. You'll soon see how good you had it with me. His arrogance infuriated me, but I remained composed. I'd rather face challenges every day than spend another moment with someone who has so little regard for his family. I replied firmly. David's smug demeanor briefly faltered, replaced by a flicker of anger. He quickly masked it with a scoff, but I could sense my words had struck a nerve. The day the divorce was finalized brought a strange mix of relief and nervous. I was finally free from David, yet the road ahead seemed daunting. However, as I walked out of the courthouse, a wave of liberation washed over me. In the weeks following our divorce, David's life began to unravel. His neglectful behavior and our separation became the gossip of his workplace. Colleagues who had once admired him now looked at him with pity and disdain. His charming facade had crumbled, exposing the pettiness and selfishness beneath. News of our divorce spread throughout our community, largely due to my cousin, who was well-connected in our neighborhood. David, who had always cared deeply about his image and reputation, found himself the subject of hushed conversations and judgmental stares. Rachel also faced criticism. Her role in our marital problems was now public knowledge, and friends and neighbors began to regard her with suspicion and disapproval. The bond she had with David, once unbreakable in her eyes, now seemed strained and uneasy. One evening, while picking up Lily from school, I overheard a heated argument between David and Rachel outside their house. Their voices dripped with blame and resentment. It's your fault we're in this mess, Rachel, David yelled, his frustration palpable. How dare you blame me? You're the one who couldn't hold your family together. Rachel shot back, her voice filled with anger. Their argument was a stark contrast to the united front they once presented. The discord sown by their actions had finally come to fruition, and now they were facing the consequences. As I walked away with Lily, I felt a sense of vindication. David and Rachel were now grappling with the results of their selfish choices. It was a tough lesson, but one they had brought upon themselves. That night, as Lily slept peacefully in her room, I sat by the window, reflecting on the past few months. The journey had been challenging, but it had brought me to a place of strength and self-respect. I had fought for my dignity and for Lily's future. Although the future was uncertain, I felt prepared to confront it with newfound confidence. In the aftermath of the divorce, life settled into a new rhythm, one that was quieter yet more fulfilling. The weight of my unhappy marriage had lifted, replaced by a newfound sense of independence. I began rebuilding my life step by step, with Lily by my side. My first priority was finding a job. The gap in my resume from years spent focusing on motherhood was a concern, but I was determined. After several interviews, I secured a position at a small accounting firm. The firm, led by a supportive woman who valued working mothers, offered a flexible and understanding environment. It was an ideal fit for me. 
Lily embraced the changes with the resilience that only children possess. She started kindergarten, making new friends and eagerly diving into learning. Her laughter and lively conversations filled our home with happiness, a stark contrast to the tense atmosphere of the past. Yet despite these positive changes, reminders of my past with David lingered. One afternoon, while dropping Lily off at school, I overheard a group of parents whispering. That's her, Evelyn. Her husband left her because he couldn't stand being around her anymore. One of them said. Their words stung, but I held my head high. The gossip and judgment were small prices to pay for the freedom and peace I now had. Meanwhile, David's life continued to unravel. His pride took a significant hit, and his once flawless reputation was now tarnished. I heard from mutual acquaintances that he had moved back in with his parents, a fact he tried to conceal but eventually became known. Rachel's situation wasn't any better. Her interference in our marriage had isolated her from many friends. The once close siblings were now barely on speaking terms, their relationship strained by blame and regret. As for me, I found solace in the unwavering support of my family. My brother Michael had moved closer to us, his presence a constant source of comfort. My parents showered Lily with love, their affection soothing the wounds of the past. One day, while savoring coffee in my kitchen, I reflected on the journey I had endured, the pain, the struggle, and ultimately the liberation. It had all brought me to this moment of peace. I hadn't just survived. I had emerged stronger and more self-assured. The doorbell interrupted my thoughts. Opening it, I found David standing there, wearing a look of defeat. Evelyn, I'm sorry. I didn't realize what I had until it was gone, he said. His apology, though belated, validated my decision. Thank you, David, I replied gently. But it's too late. I've moved on. As I closed the door on David and the life we once shared, a sense of closure washed over me. That chapter of my life had ended, and a new one was beginning. In this new chapter, I was the author of my own story, free to shape my future as I saw fit. Lily's voice called out from the living room, and a smile spread across my face. I walked towards her, eager to embrace the life that lay ahead, a life brimming with possibilities and hope.